Fresh water is one of the Earth's most vital resources. Thanks to the Great Lakes, we have an abundance of it right here in Southeast Michigan. In fact, the Great Lakes are home to 20% of all the fresh water in the world. We're fortunate to have access to such an incredible resource, but it's not as simple as just dipping in a cup and taking a drink. Most freshwater sources are filled with microorganisms and bacteria that could be harmful if ingested, unless it's treated. The Great Lakes Water Authority treats this freshwater and has the capacity to deliver 1.72 billion gallons of clean drinking water every day for approximately 3.9 million people across 115 communities in Southeast Michigan. GLWA operates five water treatment plants across the region, which produce some of the cleanest, best tasting water in the nation. So how do we take fresh water from its source, clean it, treat it, and deliver it to your home? It starts at the intake. This is how fresh water is brought from a source like the Detroit River or Lake Huron into a water treatment plant. Fresh water, also known as raw water, is untreated. When taken from its source, it can be full of debris like trash, tree branches, and aquatic life. An intake structure is placed deep under the surface to avoid picking up these larger pieces of debris. Water starts at Belle Isle and it flows by gravity through a tunnel 4,000 feet long comes underground at 65 feet below the surface. Once it reaches our low lift, debris, such as branches, leaves, rocks, stuff like that, can get captured by the screening process and removed. Next, low lift pumps bring the water up a large tunnel. To move massive amounts of water against gravity, each pump is driven by a powerful 800 horsepower electric motor, the equivalent of a Ferrari's engine. Now that the larger debris has been removed, the next step of the process begins when raw water is brought from the raw water greenhouse into the water treatment plant. While a lot of the visible debris has been removed, there are still microscopic particles and pollutants that we need to eliminate. Water treatment is the process that takes raw water, removes the harmful contaminants, both large and small, and makes it safe for us to use and drink. The first phase, coagulation and flocculation, is a critical step in the treatment process. During rapid mix, the water is being mixed very fast and a substance called alum is added to the water. The main purpose of alum is to remove those unwanted particles and bacteria in your water. Flocculators, which are like large propellers, stir the water at various speeds in large basins. This encourages the small particles to bind, forming clumps known as flock. The dense clumps settle to the bottom of the basin, preparing the raw water for the next phase, sedimentation. The heavier clump flocks from the flocculation phase now moves to the sedimentation process. Those heavier flocks will now settle at the bottom of the basin. At the bottom of the sedimentation basin, there are some scrapers that will take those particles, move those particles to our residual and handling area. That's when the water is removed from those particles. Those particles are now removed from the plant and then it's hauled off for further treatment. All the while, the clean water is being disinfected during the chlorination process as it moves to the next phase, filtration. The water is almost clean enough to drink. However, it still contains some tiny particles, microorganisms, and bacteria that weren't removed during the flocculation and sedimentation process. Filtration is the polishing stage of the water treatment process, which serves as a physical barrier to trap these particles. As water passes over coal and sand, known as media, the media attracts or traps any tiny particles left and removes them from the water. This helps filter out the last 10% of the little microscopic particles inside of our water. Once it gets to the bottom of our filters, we then have what we call potable drinking water. We can take our cups, go down there and drink the water, but we're not done yet because we have to make sure that no matter where we send our water to, throughout our member partners and our communities, that is always disinfected. 
Three additional additives, chlorine, orthophosphate, and fluoride are added to protect the water before it enters the plant's temporary holding tanks or reservoirs. Additional chlorine is added in the final step to protect the drinking water as it travels through the system. Orthophosphate acts as the water's bodyguard, forming a protective layer within the pipes to prevent metals such as lead, iron, and copper from dissolving into the water. And fluoride is used to prevent tooth decay. But how can you be sure that the water you use at home is safe? Water testing is just as important as cleaning and treating the water. At our water treatment lab, we have a direct line to the water during each step of the treatment process. Sample tabs allow us to monitor the water at the different stages of the water treatment process. So it, it tells us, you know, at any given stage what the water quality is like so that we can monitor and track changes. Daily we do hundreds of tests and then monthly we do in the thousands. We do test inside the plant, but we also test leaving the plant as well. There is um, sites in which we would take samples and test because we want to make sure that our water is safe at all levels of the treatment process. And if we see any changes, we can make those changes very quickly. Two of our water facilities also house a pilot plant, a miniature version of the entire plant where we invite different universities to test the water and improve upon the process. Well, the pilot's plant is actually used for treatment optimization and for workforce development. Treatment optimization in terms of improving our treatment processes and making sure that we're sending out clean water always to the public. Workforce development in terms of helping train our internal operators, chemists or technicians, and also externally giving it as an opportunity for interns and for students to come and learn about the principles of treatment water. Now, when we do these collaborations with academia and consulting firms, we're bringing in other experts in the field. We're bringing in other knowledge and skills and merging that with what we have in-house to actually make the research process more effective. Now that the water has been thoroughly cleaned and tested, how does it make its way to your home? The distribution system is a network of transmission mains that goes throughout southeastern Michigan. So you have mains as small as 16 inches up to 120 inches. And through these different networks, we push water out through these mains so we can get the water to different communities all over southeastern Michigan. Whether it's uphill, downhill, or at the furthest points of our service area, pressure plays a major role in the distribution process. Water pressure is important to ensure flow to the furthest point in the system. We have pump stations and service centers in place to help transport clean drinking water at the correct pressure to all the communities we serve. On average, GLWA transmits 475 million gallons of drinking water per day and is managed by its system control center team. Moving that much water is only possible with the assistance of 19 water booster stations, which holds a total of 16 reservoirs and 117 powerful pumps that help push water through the regional system's large transmission mains. Some of the transmission mains or pipes in our system stand up to 10 feet tall, large enough to fit a small submarine. All the pipes, pump stations and service centers in our system form a network of nearly 800 miles of large transmission water mains that keep water flowing to our member communities. That's the distance from Detroit to Atlanta. It's important that we all do what we can to help keep the Great Lakes clean. This helps to reduce the cost of treatment and increase the quality of our drinking water. Here are some things you can do. Don't flush medicines down the drain. Dispose of them safely by looking for designated medicine drop-off locations in your community. Minimize the use of lawn chemicals by finding ways to reduce or eliminate the use of pesticides and fertilizers. When it rains, these chemicals can wash off into our source water. Pick up pet waste and yard debris to decrease the chances of these things entering our source water. And last, during the winter months, remember to use salt wisely. At GLWA, it's our duty to ensure we protect the public health every day by providing drinking water of the highest quality. You can play a big part in that too, by protecting our source water. We only have one Earth, and together, we need to protect it for future generations.